All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to day three of the conference. Um, so I have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker this morning, Jamie Jr. Jamie is a dedicated disability justice advocate working to achieve greater access, equity and inclusion, as well as social and economic justice for all people. But she has a special passion for those who like herself face systemic oppression and ableism. Jamie's goal is to represent the disability perspective in community development and policy making. In addition to her role as the vice chair of the Michigan Developmental Disabilities Council, Jamie participates on several other community groups to create and participate in campaigns that seek to build greater awareness of issues that impact marginalized populations, including those with disabilities. Jamie is currently employed as the Advocacy and Community Education Coordinator for the Disability Network of Wayne County, Detroit. So please join me in welcoming Jamie. Thank you so much, Tracy. That introduction was so much better than I anticipated and probably even fathom. Um, so, in my pursuit of equity, something that I always do when I am before my peers is introduce myself. Um, I give a visual description of myself for folks who can't see me. So I am a light complected Black woman. I have long brown locks in my hair. Um, I'm wearing dark rim glasses. I have on a burgundy top and behind me is a background with a white wall and you can see lots of different stuff. Just a hint, that's not my office, but it's a cool background. Today, um, my title is just, I, it, it's, it's probably a little bit makes you question a little bit and that's on purpose. The focus of the conversation is about change. First slide, please. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. This quote is from the main character, Lauren, from a book called Parable of the Soar by Octavia Butler. Lauren is the daughter of a preacher and the book describes her as having a condition or disability called hyperempathy. This in the book, she creates a religion called Earthseed. The central tenet of the religion that she created is that things must change. And um, just a note, my son recommended this book to me. And I highly, highly, if you never read it, if you never heard of it, I highly, highly encourage you to look for it. The, uh, front of the book actually looks like the picture there. Um, I highly recommend it. It would be a life-changing read. And it's also available on audiobook. Next slide, please. So I have a question for you guys. And please feel free to pop your answers in the chat. I have the chat open so I can see everything that you guys are saying to me because it's super important to me. Um, and my question to you guys is, what comes to mind for you when you hear the word change? Oh, wow. These are really awesome answers. 
Oh, okay. Awesome answer. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys so very much. Uh, so I see words like stress. I see words like progress. I see schedules. I see work. I see lots of different things. And I'm here to tell you, everyone is correct because change can bring about all of those things. So during our time here today, and please forgive me for looking away, I'm working on a second screen as well to make sure that I can see all of your wonderful comments and stuff in the chat. So please be patient with me. Staff, that's an interesting one. Evolution needs to be done. Good morning, Emma. I'm so glad to hear. Emma is my friend and longtime colleague from Detroit. Every time I see her name, my heart just smiles because I know she's rooting for me. Let a lesson has to be learned and time to grow, time to grow on to the next level, new beginnings. I love it, I love it, I love it. Keep it coming as we move along. Uh, next slide, please. So actually the dictionary says that change is the act or instance of making or becoming different. It also uses the word transition. Laura, Demi, you says life. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So, change is hard. Most times, whether the change is good or bad, it's, it can be difficult to deal with. It can bring up a lot of different emotions as is evident by all of the stuff in the chat. I, I think the reason when I think about change, something that I think about often is getting from A to B and beyond. Next slide, please. So this quote is one from a Chinese philosopher and his name is Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Okay, a mouthful. And it reads, life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. He cautioned, don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. He goes on to say, let reality be reality. And let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they would like. I love it. So next slide, please. Think oh, I messed up the next slide for this. Okay. So and you'll see it later. Thinking about this slide, I created a little acronym for change myself, which is a chance to have another new growth experience. And you guys are welcome to tell me what you think of my acronym in the chat. So I'm going to tell you guys a little story. And the story is very personal to me. Um, and I want to warn you guys that um, there are a couple of triggers in there. But if you just follow me on my journey, I promise it'll be worth it. So from about... <laughs> 2015 all the way to 2020, 
life for me was really hard. I was feeling so alone. I was feeling anxious. I was feeling unsure of my decisions. I was feeling helpless. And the worst part is nobody around me knew it because they were all work. Used to me just moving along and going with the flow and dealing with things as they come. There are three things that happened during this time that are the reason for all of those feelings. My body started to change, which I felt like it was failing me. Um, for those of you who know me or those of you who don't, I at one time was able to emulate using my legs with very little support from absolutely please pass it along to others um, without a lot of support. And over the years, my, my body started to change. Um, yes, the acronym is a chant to have another new growth experience. Um, so over the period of probably about five years, I went to having to use my chair more, uh, to having to more consistently use my chair. And I'm a driver, so the car that I had at the I was not equipped for my chair. So because I'm an independent person, always on the go, always doing things, I wasn't able to get out as much. And I love concerts. I love festivals. I love all of those things. And I remember the first time it hit me that I was kind of alone on my journey was there was a concert. It was a free concert that I really, really wanted to go see. And I reached out to someone to ask them if they would like to go and if they could bring me along and help me out. And I would reciprocate by making sure that, you know, I did something to show my appreciation. Well, they went without me. And when I talked to them about it, they said, oh, we thought you were coming. We didn't know you couldn't come. So that was very hard for me. Eventually, I had to stop driving because my balance got so bad that I couldn't even use the lift that I have now because of the manual portion. So as you can imagine, uh, that change was very painful for me. But I used that change and I created joy out of it because at that time I was really, really getting to um, what all of us here today think of self-advocacy. So I've always been advocating for myself from the time that I was a young child wanting to learn and be in AP classes in school and um, getting bullied and all of that stuff. But in 2016, when all of this started happening, I went on my true journey of self-advocacy and I became a transit justice advocate. And most advocates here, I'm sure you all know that you can't advocate for something effectively if you haven't experienced it yourself. So being a true advocate and understanding that I needed to get in there and get my feet wet and get my hands dirty, I started using public transportation. Let me tell you, it did not go over well in my family. They thought I was a banana because they were used to me driving myself or coming to my rescue. But I decided to use the opportunity that life presented me to rescue myself, learn about the city 
I live in the city of Detroit. I learned about the city of Detroit's public transit system and started using something that we have here called paratransit. If anybody is from Detroit or Michigan in general, we know that public transportation, especially for those of us that have disabilities, is horrible sometimes. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to be giving this speech from my office at Disability Network, and my ride didn't show up on time. So that's the first change. The second change happened in July of 2020. So we were all going through stuff during that time, right? We all were in an uproar and upheaval. We were experiencing what I like to call the great pandemonium. So um, my nephew, my 31 year old nephew passed away. Uh, my nephew had lived with me for about five or six years, and he was my greatest support. He, when I wasn't feeling good enough to drive myself, he drove me, he encouraged me to keep driving when I wanted to give up. He was the greatest support. He was like a second son to me. He had gotten sick years before, just out of the blue, out of the blue, he had gotten sick. Um, and he was in a nursing facility. And the saddest part about him passing away was that he did it alone because of COVID. No one could visit their loved ones. He didn't have his mom. He didn't have his siblings. He didn't have me. He didn't have my mom. The only person that was with him when he passed away was his dialysis technician. And it happened in the blink. And it sent my world as well as everybody else in my family's world into a tailspin. But like I always do, I sprang into action, right? I went immediately into advisor mode, comforter mode and started helping my sister plan. Um, I was support for her, for her other son, for my family. So much so that I even helped to pay for his final arrangements. I offered my home up for his repast, planned it completely by myself, organized everything, and I even created his funeral booklet on the very computer that I'm talking to you guys on now. I did it all by myself. That was my way of saying um, goodbye and thank you. During that time, something else was going on was that my mom had had an injury and she had to be in the rehab facility. So we couldn't see her, we couldn't, you know, touch her. And she got COVID. So it was just so many things coming at me at one time. And I'm sure all of you guys can relate. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm sure all of you guys can relate. So I tell this story for a couple of different reasons. For one, I tell this story because it illustrates change, tragedy, trauma, resilience, and joy. And you might be asking, why do I say joy, right? So that particular aspect is 
really, it really boils down to perspective. And what is perspective is the way you see things that come, that come to your life. So a long time ago, I developed a perspective of things happen. Everything happens for a reason, whether good, bad, or indifferent, everything has a time. As a matter of fact, there's a bird song. I don't know if anybody's familiar with the birds, um, but they have a song that quotes um, a scripture from the Bible uh, and include the Ecclesiastes 3 that says that there is a time for every season under heaven and it goes on and talk about change and all that. If you haven't heard the song, great song. Awesome. Ellen says she loves that song. Thank you all, by the way, for communicating with me. This is awesome. I know that Zoom can be horrible, especially for an hour. But um, us being able to interact together is great. So. If change is necessary, if change is a part of the human condition, if change is the rule and not the exception, why is it so scary? Why do we resist it? I did some research to think, to get some get some clinical information about this. Can you go to the next slide, please? So I read an article in Psychology Today, and the doctor who wrote the article, her name was Abigail Brenner. And along with everything else, she said that the reason why we run, why we resist change is because it's scary. And it puts us in a place of vulnerability. And a lot of times it can also cause us some shame. So yes, the fear of the unknown and the lack of control is what it really boils down to. In her article, and I have the link listed below if you guys want to check it out. She says, turning too quickly away from what change has to offer may deprive us of gaining valuable insight or being gifted by a powerful lesson. The key here is to understand that change is the rule and not the exception. And I read so many articles and all of the articles talked about the same type of deal about change being the bull and not the exception and we are typically as humans we are scared to be out of control to show vulnerability we think of vulnerability as weakness but there is a wonderful <clears throat> A wonderful, wonderful author, speaker, and researcher named Brene Brown that talks about vulnerability. And I think in one of the speeches that I heard, she called it a superpower. And I tend to agree. Vulnerability allows you to connect with people and connect with the things around you. And it teaches you something about yourself. It, it, it's the quickest way to be resilient. And that's a big word, right? A lot of us hear it all the time. But at its core, resilience is the ability to bounce back from, from a certain change or a certain situation. And I see all of you can identify with um, call to change. 
Call to Courage on Netflix. Have to check it out. Can identify. Uh, I hope I'm not bumming you guys out, and I hope you're getting something out of my um out of my words today. So um oh that's awesome. I'm making you feel like you're not alone. Oh that makes my heart leap makes my heart leap oh my goodness because as peers that's our job our job is to take the lemons that life gives us the experiences that we have and use that to help someone else be their best to change lives so now we're going to talk i'm going to give you some tips for embracing change thank you thank you so much um so five tips for embracing change the first step to to embrace the change oh you can go there next time so this is another quote and it's by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And he's the guy that writes all the books about nature. I read him a lot when I was younger. And he says, not in his goals, but in his transition, man is great. And I think that quote is talking about how, how we how we face our transition, more about the transition themselves. So we prove our character and how we deal with change. Next slide. And I think this is my little acronym and I'm sorry, these slides are out of order. So this is the acronym and these slides will be available and I invite you to print it out and frame it hanging on your wall a, a chance to have another new growth experience and that's what change is so um back to my advice to myself as well as you first step is to acknowledge the change and allow yourself time and that time is for you to either grieve the change or celebrate the change. And typically what I've experienced in my life is those two things go hand in hand. You can't experience joy without experiencing loss because in order for something new to come, something old has to go away. And that's okay. It's okay to experience the depth of human emotion, of grief, of celebration, all in the same vein. You are not bananas. It just happens. You are just human. The second thing I say is assess the damage. So what happened during the change? You know, um, what, it has to be cleaned up. And then the third step, which is the longest between step number one and step number three, these are the longest processes. So next slide, please. Step number three is one of my favorite things, is to do a self SWAT. And SWAT is not to be confused with the TV show or movie about the tactical police unit, this SWAT means, this SWAT is a process of self-examination. And during this process, you evaluate your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. So of course we know what strengths are, what we're good at, weaknesses, I'm gonna go into it a little bit, um, but I will 
know that this is the time during the process for my, my pro-con list makers and my goal setters and my, I'm gonna journal everything. This is your time to shine, right? So during this why you're gonna ask yourself the following question. What are my strengths in this area? What can I get better at? How can I use this situation for the betterment of myself? Or what do I want to come from this situation? That's the opportunity. And then the threat is, what, what can get in my way? What will the new thing cost me? And when you think about cost, typically we think about cost in terms of financial. But I invite you and encourage you to think about cost in a multi in a multi-dimensional type of um, framework where you think about what will it cost me financially? What will it cost me physically? What will it cost me emotionally and mentally? And remember during this whole process, as we're going through change, imagination is key. Uh, the quote that I read at the beginning of my speech um, by the character in the book, Parable of the Sower. She imagined this religion. Her father was a preacher and he preached the gospel as written in the Bible. And he did so her whole life. But her world changed and she decided to use her imagination. And within, without her imagination, her religious movement and mission would have been reduced to being a product of the dying presence that she was a part of. She decided to not be undertaken by all of the tragedy and destruction she saw around her, she decided to use her imagination to develop something that allowed her and the other people in her circle to be able to find some type of relief. And I thought that was so awesome. As I said, I recommend that book. It's life changing. So in all of this, remember that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Can you uh, go to the next slide, please? There's like, I think my slides are out of order. Can you go to the next slide? Nope, it's not in there. Never mind. Nope, it's not in there. I left it out. I'm sorry. Go back. Yeah. Okay. So, Dealing with all of this, please remember when we think about change, we think about it in terms of what it can bring us and what it can remove from us. And in a lot of ways, whether you're a spiritual person like myself or not, things typically work themselves out. There is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, and I apologize if I'm offending someone who is not uh, religious or spiritual, because I'm not religious, I'm spiritual, but I do find comfort in the Bible. Um, the book is called Parable of the Sower, and it's by Octavia Butler. You can actually look it up on YouTube, and the book will be there along with uh, a different picture. It's like a six hour read, a six hour listen, but it's really good if you have trouble sleeping like me, I recommend it. You're welcome. Um, so remember that there's light at the end of the tunnel. 
in that uh, scripture that I was going to mention to you guys is Romans 8 and 28. That whole chapter of Romans is pretty good, but 8 and 28 is my favorite verse. And it says that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So I used to go back and forth about what that verse meant. Take it at face value. And it will change the way that you see the things in your life. So that being the case, always know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Anybody uh, a superhero fan in the room, like the Avengers and uh, Iron Man and all those folks? I love, I love Marvel. Absolutely. So, Josh Wheaton says the thing about a hero is when it doesn't look like there is light at the end of, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, he keeps on digging. He's going to keep trying to write and make up for what's gone before, just because that's who he is. That's a powerful statement if you really let it resonate. A hero is a person that keeps moving forward regardless to the circumstances around. They keep digging, they keep pushing because that's who they are. As peers, peer mentors, peer support specialists, advocates, and those that support others, we are heroes. Never forget that about yourself. We are heroes. We do just what it says in Romans 8 and 28. We allow all things, not some things, but all things to work together for good. We take our experiences and use them to empower others. So, thinking about all of that and thinking about perspective, which again is the way that you look at things, although the last two and a half years of COVID and all of that stuff has sucked the pandemonium of it all, as I call it, there has been a huge spotlight put on inequities that exist in our world. Health inequities, racial inequities, economic inequities, all those things. Particularly as it relates to minority groups, which arguably, I think not arguably, absolutely 1,000% certain, but arguably people with disabilities are the largest minority group because we span every single walk of life you can think of. Gender expression, gender identity, sexual orientation, class, race, educational status, the whole nine yards. We span it all. So the world has had a chance because of the pandemonium, the world has had an opportunity to experience firsthand what many of us have experienced our whole lives. And in experiencing that, we have now turned from 
ignored in some cases, marginalized in most cases, and dismissed in a lot of cases into the experts. People are coming to us to figure out, how do you do this? How do you manage life in this way? So let's talk about some positive societal evolutions or changes that have come out of this whole horrible situation. So in the beginning, the government was having press conferences and those of us with disabilities sometimes could not follow those press conferences because they used a lot of big words and they just meander on and on and on. And I hope I'm not doing that today with you guys. But the government entities around the country began making sure that captioning and ASL interpreters we're at all major press conferences. I think that's huge because captioning is great, awesome. I myself am not a part of the deaf or hard of hearing community, but I love captions because I struggle with focus sometimes especially when something is boring and it gives me the opportunity to follow along with what folks are saying and not get lost in the sauce. The other positive that came is that private organizations, the healthcare industry and, and educational institutions all began to understand the importance of providing alternatives to in-person service delivery methods, uh, conversations about equity in education and healthcare and economics all became a part of the mainstream conversation. And the best thing that happened Remote work and telecommuting became part of the mainstream conversation in America. And it provided an opportunity for those of us with disabilities who have skills and knowledge to share with the world, but sometimes struggle with transportation or how do we manage a typical nine to five needing support. changed and helped us grow. Can you go to the next slide, please? So this is probably familiar to many of you, but it's got a little twist and it's called the serenity prayer. And this says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and it invites the, the source to give us the wisdom to know the difference. But it goes on to say, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, and accepting hardships as a pathway to peace. I love this. I have to figure out a way to put it on a plaque so I can hang it on my wall. And I found this. It was life changing. And the next slide, please. And finally, I'll leave you with this. The light at the end of the tunnel is not the illusion. The tunnel begins. I thank you all for listening, interacting with me, and hopefully enjoying what I had to say today. And we are at 945, so I think that's my time. Thank you, guys. Awesome.
earth. You are, you all are so welcome. Thank you so much. And these slides will be made available uh, to uh, the folks who are in charge of the conference. None of it is um, copyrighted, so all of it is yours to use as you see fit. 